It's three in the morning. Barbecue people, why do we do this to ourselves? Hey guys, welcome to part two of the brisket cook. Uh, today what we're gonna be working on is just, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to season briskets and then uh, just kind of doing the cook. Uh, so my rub is gonna be, it's gonna be simple. Uh, it's really just simply just gonna be salt and pepper. Um, but uh, you know, most of the bulk of the video is just gonna be just kind of just walking you through, uh, through a cook. Um, Honestly, brisket cooks aren't really that difficult. Uh, once you're able to figure out how to maintain temps and uh, kind of have different things that you're looking for at certain times of the cook to let you know whether or not like your cook is behind or if it's ahead and things like that. That's what I'm gonna be working on talking about uh, mostly during this video. Um, right now in Chicago, I, it, I try to pick a better day to do this cook where it's a little bit warmer out, but I think today's high is supposed to be in the mid twenties or something. So um, that's gonna be a challenge that uh, I'm gonna be going through today is just to make sure my temp is up. I'm gonna try not to open up that, uh, that door uh, too much, um, but every once in a while, uh, I'll open up the door to show you guys um, you know, what we're working with, uh, things that I'm looking for to let me know, like I said, if I'm uh, ahead or behind in the cook. Um, so generally, I would like to be able to finish a cook within 12 hours or so. Um, again, with the weather uh, and uh, just the type of wood that I have here, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but um, yeah, uh, we're gonna just kind of go through things. I already got the fire started right now. Uh, usually when I'm doing all this prep in terms of um, seasoning briskets and all that kind of stuff, I like to get the fire going at least about an hour ahead or so um, just to get a good coal bed going. And later after that, um, you know, we can throw a couple logs on there and it can kind of maintain for a while while we have to worry about other things. But um, yeah, let's get started on seasoning briskets. All right, so we're gonna start with fat cap side down. Uh, so we're gonna be seizing the bottom of the brisket right now. Um, so right now, simply, we're just gonna be going back and forth a couple times, um, just making sure that coat is nice and even. Uh, and we wanna make sure that as we're spr sprinkling it on, that we're seeing an even distribution of that salt and pepper uh, that's inside there. Um, we also want to make sure that we're kind of seasoning outside the brisket as well. Uh, that, that's one of the things that I like to do to make sure that I'm getting an even coat uh, from edge to edge. Uh, also, don't forget to season your sides. So if you have to you know, lift up your brisket a little bit to hit those edges, sometimes you can kind of catch it with your hand and let it bounce back um, and just kind of hit the sides. Uh, and every once in a while, just make sure you guys are swirling that shaker to make sure that salt doesn't sink to the bottom because it is heavier than that pepper. Uh, so make sure we get it nice and even. All right, so now we're gonna start, we're gonna have meat side up. So this is our presentation side. So we wanna make sure that as we're seasoning, we're gonna keep, we're not gonna flip this anymore. We wanna make sure that once that salt and pepper sits on it, that it's even, that it's pretty, that everything that we need to do, it's not gonna smear. Cause the bottom of the brisket might smear, but um, you know, we're not really too worried about that. Uh, and also uh, we're not putting any binder on it, there might be other places that use mustard or a light coat of oil on top of their meat. Uh, but because we trimmed this brisket yesterday, there is still a little bit of moisture and tackiness on top of that brisket. So we don't necessarily need that. So uh, unless your brisket feels really dry, uh, I, I wouldn't say you need to go out and buy a new you know, um, bottle of mustard or oil just for that. Um, but just kind of keep that in mind. Also, um, you know, there's no real recipe for the amount of salt and pepper per pound, uh, the size of your brisket. Um, you know, it's gonna, you're just, sometimes you're gonna season a little bit more, sometimes you're gonna season a little less, and you're just kind of figuring out the balance of what you like and what your taste is. Um, so right now, what I like to do is, um, my seasoning is more like 50-50 salt and pepper, and then I like to add a little bit more pepper just because I like that extra peppery taste. Um, so I would say start 50-50, and then you can start adding things that you like, whether it's a little bit of onion, garlic, some people use cayenne for a little bit of spice, but um, you know, you'll kind of adjust as you go. 
Uh, so that's it guys um it's very simple we're just going to make sure it's nice and even all the way across make sure you pat it down every once in a while those spots that might look a little bit lighter it's all right like it'll even itself out or you can put a little more seasoning on if you feel like it needs it but um this is about ready to go on um it's really early in the morning and i don't want to wake up my neighbors so i'm going to put this on right now but i'll show you guys what it looks like in a couple hours I'm just gonna close that pit just so we can uh, maintain some of that heat still. But um, just to uh, reiterate guys, like you don't need to spritz um, your briskets every hour or two hours or um, what, what you hear a lot of people say. Um, you know, I would say the only time you really need a spritz uh, is when, you know, uh, your fire got a little bit too hot and there's some crisping around the edges. Um, if the trim was a little, again, if I had that thin spot, and a lot of people will say like, uh, you know, they want to get more smoky flavor on their briskets. And so, you know, that extra moisture is going to help attract some smoke, which is true. Technically, yeah, if that, that surface is a little bit wetter, then yes, it will attract a little bit more smoke, but it's not going to get you a better or, or uh, any better smoke ring or smoke your flavor in your brisket just because you spritz every once in a while if anything you're gonna slow down your cook especially like my smoker right here where it's only got one door every single time i open it you know i'm letting all that heat out so with that being said uh i haven't spritzed this at all uh i've let this go for six hours i maybe peeked at it uh, maybe once in between just because i wanted to make sure that uh the temp that i was cooking at wasn't uh super hot for my smoker uh because one thing that tends to happen with um you know as you kind of like work with different smokers smokers and stuff like that um depending on the size of your brisket i mean sorry the size of your smoker sometimes smaller uh smokers 250 might be a little bit too hot so you want to be a little bit careful just to make sure that you're going in every once in a while just to kind of poke that just make sure it's not uh, getting too crispy uh, and something that you should be feeling for if you're poking at your briskets right now is that it is going to start to firm up uh, so the first like I would say two three hours it, the brisket still getting very very loose because it really hasn't cooked yet and then probably until it hits like the eight hour mark maybe close to nine hour mark the meat itself is still going to be pretty firm the fat might start to get a little bit soft on top which is what we're looking for uh, but that lean on the bottom should have start to have a little bit of flex um, as you kind of go. So uh, again, I'll come back out in a couple of hours when I'm looking for those kind of markers. So again, just about six hours in, this is like when I like to do my first check and the next check uh, will be around the eight hour mark uh, just to see where it's at. And then definitely checking around the nine, 10 hour mark to see, um, you know, if it's almost ready to wrap. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's just a quick update. Uh, looking at those briskets, they're doing pretty good. Um, Again, the fire is, or the wood is a little bit green. Uh, so uh, I can I can even hear kind of like the spits of water that's coming out of it, which isn't great, but you know, it's barbecue. You gotta do what you gotta do and work with what you got, so. All right, 
Uh, we're about at the nine, nine and a half hour mark right now. Um, I don't know if you can tell um, just from the video, maybe if it's in the shadow right here, uh, but that bark is starting to get nice and dark now. Um, it's a lot darker than it was before. It used to be a, like, kind of it had a tint of red, but now it's pretty brown to almost blackish. So, um, you know, that's what we're looking for. And uh, I don't know if you can tell right here, the fat is starting to soften up. It's not quite there yet. You poke the side of that lean, it's starting to soften up as well. Um, so everything is starting to loosen up. Everything's starting to feel um, like it should. Um, so at this point in time, I'm going to uh, just keep, make sure I keep my temp up. Uh, probably going to take another at least 45 minutes or so uh, until I can get these things wrapped up. Um, but again, yeah, we're just going to keep our temp high. I didn't, again, I didn't spritz at all, but there's still plenty of moisture coming out from here, you know, because throughout the cook, your brisket's going to be, you know, pushing out a bunch of water. That fat cap is going to be rendering. So you already got natural juices in that brisket. So you can tell on that back one right there. Uh, even though I tried to I tried to tip it earlier, it just kind of kind of settled. So uh, we might have a little um, you know bald patch right there, seasoning right in the center, but it's all right. Uh, this is the one that I showed, uh, the one that we trimmed in the first video, uh, but it's looking good. So again, we're gonna close this door, uh, keep that temp up. We'll come back about 45 minutes or hour or so, whenever it's ready to wrap. Uh, I like to wrap my briskets in a certain way. It's kind of like uh, my wrap is in combination of, of different people I've worked with. I kind of took different folds and different wraps and just kind of made it my own thing. Uh, it is a lot of steps, I would say more so. And I mean, they're not all necessary, but I like having them all there for a specific purpose. So I'll kind of explain what I'm doing as I go um, and why I like certain folds or why I'm tucking them a certain way. Because uh, to me, that's what kind of like uh, uh, I, I just don't want later on when I'm checking the brisket, I don't want the paper to get in the way. I don't want to have to unravel the whole thing just to look at the brisket and see if it's done. I want to make sure that uh, when I'm checking it, like I can uh, check the bottom of the brisket and get to the meat without unraveling the entire thing and having to put it back together. And all that juice that is getting collected inside the brisket, I don't want that all to be uh, to lost, uh, to be like spilled out because that juice and stuff that's still going to be running around that brisket is going to help it kind of braise the bottom of that lean so um, with that being said we'll just get started all right um, so first thing I like to do is like you know we're gonna overlap the two uh, pieces of butcher paper and I would say probably about I don't know two inches or so uh, you're gonna have an overlap in the middle depending on the size of the brisket if it's really long you might have to stretch it out a little bit further uh, but none of my briskets today are that big, so uh, I think two inches should be fine. Uh, so the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spritz in between that little section that we got there, uh, because one thing it's gonna help do is going to uh, help it kind of stick in it here. So later on, let's say if we do end up having a really large brisket and um, you know the papers want to separate from each other this kind of ensures that it's going to stick a little bit better than you know if we didn't have anything uh, and also i'm just spraying with some apple cider vinegar that's it all right so we're going to just spray that surface of the paper just so it's nice and pliable take this first brisket and um you know we talked about in that uh uh, what is it during our trim video, you know, we have the hump side and the opposite smooth side to me uh, It's not really uh, It's more preference. I'm just comfortable doing it this way I know other people don't care or they do it the opposite way, 
I like that smooth side of the hump side to be away from me just so I can get a really clean uh, you know, fold over because my first fold is gonna be here and I like having on that smooth side so I can get it nice and uh, smooth all the way across, all right? So uh, also I want the way, uh, the position of my brisket. I'm gonna make sure just enough so that if I fold it over that this paper is not tucked underneath it but that it's kind of laying over like that, okay? That's kind of like the per perfect length that I'm looking for. Uh, also, if you want to spritz the top of the brisket just a little bit, just so that helps so it doesn't stick. You don't need to, but we'll just do it anyway. All right. So this first fold is going to be over here, and uh, this is something that I learned from uh, from Dylan Taylor. Uh, shout out to Goldie's Barbecue. All right. So uh, from here on that moisten, because I want to create that really nice crease, and because it's rounded, uh, what I'm going to do is going to grab this and I'm going to take my my right hand and I'm going to kind of twist it and lay it over that way if you look on the back side right there you get a really nice whoop really nice clean fold I'll show it to you guys after we finish but so that twist is going to help us kind of get a nice fold on that uh, on that smooth side so I'll show you again so again I'm picking it enough so that it's just kind of laying over on top I'm going to pick it up pull it and kind of go from here and this is something I learned from uh, Leonard at Truth, uh, kind of this is excess paper. I don't want too much of it, but I'm gonna start to tuck a little bit underneath here because I don't want it to go all the way underneath. I always still want brisket to be showing here because later when I go check it, I wanna be able to poke the bottom of the brisket without having to pull out all this paper. So ju just enough right there, okay? And then I like to take this moist side first, push it down straight across. Same thing now on the opposite end here. Push it down and straight across. One thing that I want to have is I want to have the length of this paper right here to be as wide as the width of my brisket. Because if it ends up getting too narrow here, as I can, if I once I roll this brisket, it's just not going to be even, and there's going to be a, uh, it's just going to kind of taper together at the bottom at a weird point, and it's not going to really do anything much. So from here. I'll show you with the, uh, I got second brisket, I'll show you this again. I have this excess paper right here that it's not gonna fold all the way through, so I'm gonna kind of fold it over halfway through, pull it tight. That way we can get a nice clean fold right here. Uh, this is the other thing right here, so on that moist end, uh, this is something that I used to talk to uh, Braun about. Uh, shout out to uh, Style Switch. Uh, we called he, he called this the windsock because you know we both kind of like don't really like this excess paper right here I don't know, maybe because we're both kind of you know you know we're just focused on these little details we don't like having this and hopefully and thinking that it might catch uh, or disrupt the airflow so from here we'll just kind of tuck this underneath right there so then now you got kind of like a smooth shape brisket wrap all right so Main thing is that we want to keep it tight as much as possible. So throughout your wrap, you want to keep tugging and pulling to make sure that the paper is, you know, getting tugged against or, or tugged towards that surface of the brisket. All right. That right there are our two wrap briskets, okay? So these will probably go on again for another two hours or so. We'll check them at two hours. Uh, the way that the cook has been going today, uh, I'm guessing it's gonna go on for a little bit longer. Uh, that weather and the cold is affecting the cook uh, a little bit more than I thought it would. And the green wood is definitely, a, a, just it's just hard to kind of maintain a, a proper temp. So, uh, but we're just gonna cook it until it's ready. Um, and uh, we'll just, uh, I'll let you guys know what I'm looking for when I'm pulling these briskets, different things that I'm feeling for, and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys when these are ready pulled.
All right, guys, uh, the brisket is finished. Uh, this is technically the next morning. Uh, I finished this brisket last night. Uh, what I did is I took these briskets and I just kind of stuck them in the, I let them cool down for quite a bit for about two hours or so, uh, just kind of sitting out. And then I put them in the uh, oven at the lowest temp. I think my oven goes down to 140 or so. So I left those overnight. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted to make a video of uh, what I was looking for and what I'm feeling for a brisket um, at the end of the night. But honestly, I was just way too tired. So uh, it is the next morning, but I'll tell you guys what I'm looking for and what I'm where I'm still poking at to get that right texture and feel on that brisket. Uh, and then uh, just in a few minutes, we'll go and slice this thing up. So um, when you guys are pulling a brisket, I want to flip that brisket over. This is how I like to do it. There are other people who do it differently. Uh, and there are other people who use uh, you know, towels. There are other people who use gloves like I do. There are people that use both towel and gloves. Um, but this is essentially what I'm feeling for. Uh, other people will say differently, or maybe they'll not say differently, but they're looking for other things other than what I'm looking for right now. But this is kind of like test number one. So the first thing I'm looking for is I'm kind of poking throughout the entire surface of the bottom right here. I am giving a little bit of pressure, but I'm not trying to like jam my thumb through it. Um, but when I'm when we're pulling this brisket uh, like yesterday, what I'm feeling for is a is a looseness. I don't want any tightness in this brisket. Sometimes what you get is you'll have the edges being a little bit looser and the center being really, really tight. Or sometimes you could have the middle being softer and the edges are still a little tight. So if that happens, uh, generally, you know, it, it's probably anywhere between another 20 to 30 minutes um, at that finishing temp that you're looking for. Uh, and then the other thing that I'm doing is, um, uh, if I, this is meat side up now, or sorry, fat side up. On that moist then I'm gonna kind of give it a little squeeze and it should feel a lot softer because all that fat and that marbling inside there. Uh, last check that I like to do, uh, sometimes with the paper, the paper can create its own texture. Uh, so just to kind of give an indication of what the meat actually feels like. Uh, you know, like we were folding before and I said that I wanted to have access to the bottom of the meat without unraveling the entire brisket itself. So I'm just opening up this flap. Remember we kind of cur curled that paper underneath it when we were wrapping it. Now I do, it's still curled up, there's still paper, but I have access to the meat underneath. And so I'm kind of running my fingers underneath it and I'm not trying to, you know, feel it with like one finger. I don't want to break in and, uh, you know, create a hole in the brisket if it is too soft. So I'm kind of balancing it with my my, my three fingers and I'm just trying to kind of feel underneath it to see if it like forms and it's bending with my fingers I move them and it is and it feels really nice uh, and so that's what we're uh, that's what I'm looking for okay um, also so like I was mentioned before with uh, ho like how to check briskets whether you're using gloves towels or both I would say whatever way that you are going to decide to do it do that every single time um, because if you are doing you know with gloves one day and then you're doing a towel with the next and the next day you're doing both you're always going to get a different feel of a brisket so whatever type of method that you're going to use just stick with it um, you might i mean i'm not saying that you can't try to do different things but I would say once you pick a brisket that you really like, that you like the feel of, that you know that for a fact that, hey, this brisket cook is really good, um, then you can start using different methods to ch check that same brisket at the end. Um, so uh, with that, if I really wanted to, I could grab a towel, take off the gloves, kind of give the same poke test to see what it feels like or use a glove and the towel, get a poke test. You know, people like using both because the briskets tend to get really hot. And, you know, when you're pulling, you know, 25 to 50 of them, they still tend to burn your hands, even though I'm wearing heat gloves underneath here. So um, that's it, guys. That's our that's our entire uh, brisket cook video. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really interested to see what, the, what this looks like because it does feel really good, but it's been on there for a really long time. It's not that big of a brisket, but, you know, we'll see how it goes when we slice it up in the next video, uh, and I'll see you guys then.